What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is the first champion review of the year. And the champion I'm going to be doing today is Kale and Morgana. I think it's Morgana. So yesterday I did the actual interactive tour of Demacia. I went through the actual map and looked at a couple of actual areas of the map regarding Demacia. And I mentioned in that video as well that I'm going to be going through every single character in Demacia first before I move on to the next region. So the next character, technically two characters that I'm going to be doing today is Kale and Morgana. So um, it's quite a long one. Oh my god! It's quite a long one, there's quite a lot of stuff to go through. I'm gonna go through both their stories, I'm gonna go through both their bios, I'm gonna go through two login themes, there's a special interaction, uh, and there's a few other things that I forgot off the top of my head as well. But I will timestamp the whole thing as I always do, so you can pick out a particular part if you want to just get to that part. Um, don't know what I hit there, let's move that back a little bit. Uh, and yeah, um, let's get into it. Ew. Blinded by the shadows your light casts. Here to make excuses for their darkness, sister? Oh, sister. The unrighteous will burn! Okay, Varus. Got it. And the fires of justice shall vanquish the darkness. Justice, how boring! As evil grows, so shall I. I make my own justice. Oi. Okay, range. Behold the righteous flame. Oi. Darkness reveals our truth. Why have we wings, sister, if not to fly? Why do we have feet if not to tread upon the soil? Okay. Okay. So that was a good start. That was the actual champion gameplay trailer. So we got we got to see some of their abilities there. I'm sure that'll be flushed out in the spotlight as well. But yeah, I've gathered from that now that they're sisters. One is technically good and one is technically bad. One follows light, one follows darkness. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through both their bios and hopefully that should flush out, flush out. That should flush out a little bit more about these two characters. So. Let's go. So this one is Kale the Righteous. Let's go. As the room walls raged, Mount Targon stood as a beacon against the oncoming darkness. Kale and her twin sister Morgana were born beneath that light. Their parents, Mahira and Kilam, began the perilous climb in search of the power to save their tribe from destruction. Hmm, I wonder if these two are the ones we saw in, I forgot the name of the video, the video to do with Mount Targon, where she gets shot with an arrow, she kind of dies, and they both walk off the, off that cliff. I wonder if this is the same one. Hmm. Anyways, even when Mahira learned she was with child, she pushed onward. At the mountain summit, she was chosen as, why, okay, as a divine vessel for the aspect of justice, wielding a sword that blazed with a fire brighter than the sun. Okay, cool. Not long after the twins were born, Kale, the elder by breath, was as bright as Morgana was dark. But Mahira had become a fearsome warrior, far greater than any mortal. Kilan began to fear her new divinity and the sorceress enemies that were drawn to her light. He resolved to take the girls away from harm's way, journeying across the Conqueror's Sea to a settlement where the land itself was said to offer protection against magic. Right. You can't blame him. Can't blame him for that. In their new homeland, Killam raised the twins, their temperaments growing more different with each passing day. Kale was precarious, often arguing with the settlement's leaders about their rules. She had no real memory of her mother's powers, but knew the laws were meant to keep them all safe. Her father rarely spoke of such things, but Kale was certain Mahira had saved them by ending the room wars on some distant battlefield. When the twins were teenagers, a streak of flame split the sky. A sword smouldering with celestial fire struck the ground between Kill and her sister, breaking into two. Killam was distraught when he recognised the blade as Mahira's. 
Right, okay. Maybe because he knows what might happen to his daughters if they obviously touch this blade. And they do. <laughs> Kale eagerly snatched up one half of the weapon, feathers, feathered wings springing forth from her shoulders, and Morgana cautiously followed her example. In that moment, Kale felt more connected to her mother than, mother than ever. Certain that this was a sign she was alive and wanted her daughter to follow the same path as her. Hmm, I wonder if her mother's still alive then. Does that mean she's still alive or has she died? Hmm. The people of the settlement believed the girls had been blessed by the stars, destined to protect the fledgling nation of Demacia, right, from outsiders. So that kind of makes sense now, where it said that the father Killam took them to a distant land that was protected from magic, which we obviously know why it's protected from magic. Well, technically, anyway. So, these winged protectors became symbols of light and truth and were re and were revered, rev revered sorry, by all. Kale fought in many battles, flying at the head of the growing militia and imbuing the weapons of the worthy with her own sanctified fire. But in time, her pursuit of justice began to consume her. Seeing threats without, with and without, she founded a judicate order to enforce the law and hunted down rebels and revelers with equal fever. So like it said, our favour, like it said there, um, her pursuit of justice began to consume her, seeing threats with, within and without. Mm. But there was one person she softened her judgement towards. To the dismay of her followers, Kale allowed Morgana to rehabilitate wrongdoers who appeared humble enough to admit their guilt. Which seems kind of fair. That seems kind of okay. Kale's protege, Ronus, was the most disapproving of all. He swore to do what Kale would not and attempt to imprison Morgana. Hmm. Good luck with that, my friend. Kale returned to find people writing and Ronus, there we go, Ronus dead. Consumed by rage, she looked down upon the city and summoned her divine fire to cleanse the city of its sins. Morgana flew up to meet her, raising her blade. If Kale was to purge the darkness she saw in mortal hearts, she would have to start with her own sister. The two battled across the heavens, each matching the other's terrible blows and striking the buildings beneath them to rubble. Abruptly, the fight was halted by, the fav by their father's anguished cry. Kale watched Killam kill die in her sister's arms, a senseless victim of the violence that had overtaken the city that day. Then she held the two halves of their mother's sword in her hands and vowed she would never again let mortal emotions to rule her. Hmm rule her. As, the, as she leapt back into the sky, soaring high above the clouds, she felt she could almost see Mount Targon beyond the horizon, its formidable peak bathed red by the setting sun. There she would seek perfect, per, sorry, there she would seek perfect celestial clarity. There she would stand at her mother's side and fulfil her legacy to the aspect of justice. Though she had been absent from Demacia for many centuries, Kale's legend has inspired much of the kingdom's culture and law. Grand statues and icons of the Wing Protector give strength to the heart of every warrior who marches to illuminate the night and banish all shadows from their land. In times of strife and chaos, there are many who cling to the hope that Kale might eventually return, and others who pray that such a day will never come. Right, okay, so nice to get the little bit of a bio on Kale, that's a good start. Kind of ironic though, isn't it, that the father was trying to protect both of them from the powers of his wife, I believe, and that didn't work. And not only did it not work, um, they actually both killed him indirectly, but he actually died by their hands as well, which is pretty tough. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting now to see the actual story or the, the actual, yeah, the story from Morgana's point of view. So let's get into Morgana's bio. Right, so Morgana the Fallen. Whether through destiny or circumstance, Morgana and her sister were born to a world in conflict. The cataclysmic rune wars had ripped through most of the Lorien and Shirima and, po and seen poised engulf even the peaks of Targon. Morgana's parents, Mahira and Kalim, knew the legends of the Great Mountain granting divine power. They saw no other choice than to attempt the long and perilous journey if the tribe was to be saved, which we obviously found out a little bit in the previous bio. Even when they learned Mahira was with child, they could not turn back. Finally, that when Rune Terror touched, touches the stars, Killen watched in wonder and fear as Mahira was chosen to embody the aspect of justice. Right, so that's their mother. Now, I wonder if 
you can have more than one aspect. So can you have, because clearly now Kale is the aspect of justice, does that mean that her mother is dead or can her mother still be alive and also be the aspect of justice? Maybe somebody in the comment section can let me know, can you basically have more than one aspect of uh, each thing? So for example, this one of justice. I guess I'm gonna say no. So the couple returned not only the couple returned not only with the salvation they sought, but with twin daughters, Morgana and Kale. However, the celestial power that claimed Mahira began to overshadow her mortal personality and affections. She would often push the girls into her father's arms, abandoning them to answer battle's call. For many months uncertainty gone to kill him. The wars still raged on countless fronts, and his beloved wife was slipping away. Fearing for his daughter's safety, he waited for Mihira to leave one more, once more, then fled, ta fled to Targon with both of them, which kind of makes sense. You can kind of see, obviously, his motivations behind doing this. He clearly doesn't want his daughters to turn out the way that his wife has turned. Though their destination did not yet have a name, it would become known as a haven for magic and persecution, right? The Kingdom of Demacia. Uh, there were twin. Th though, there, the, sorry, there, the twins grew different as day and night. While Kale studied the settlement's growing set of laws, Darkhead Morgana began became troubled by their distrust of new arrivals. Knowing what it was to be a refugee, she wandered the wilds, taking the wayward mages and other other castouts from the dangers they might bring. At home, she felt her father's heartbreak at leaving Mahira behind, and grew bitter at her mother for causing such pain. Morgana's fear is that she and Kale might carry some resentment of the uh, remnants of the aspect's power were eventually confirmed when a great blade weathered in shadow and starfire fell from the heavens. As it pierced the ground splitting into two, feathered wings burst from the girl's shoulders. Their father wept at the sight of them, of, of them each taking up half of the weapon, and we obviously know why he did that, and turned away even as Morgana reached out to comfort him. While Kale embraced their new calling, rallying an order of judicators to enforce the law, Morgana resented her gifts until the night their settlement was raided. Killian found himself surrounded as the fighting spread. In that moment, Morgana rushed to shield him, burning her, his attackers to ash. Together, the sisters saved countless lives and were hailed as the winged protectors of Demacia. But Kale grew more extreme in her ideologies, and Morgana increasingly found herself pleading the case of those who wanted to atone for their crimes, which seems to be kind of fair, you know, everyone should be kind of forgiven and given a second chance. An accord was struck between the sisters and their mortal devotees, though it was uneasy and did not last. Kale's most ardent discipline, Ronus, which we found about in the last one, came to arrest Morgana herself. Attempting to protect her pertinent followers, she shackled him with dark flame until he fell to the floor dead. Divine fire lit the city from above as Kale swore to bring Rona's killer to justice and Morgana met her sister in the skies. We know what happens next. They raised their blades, each matching the other with arcs of blinding light and burning darkness that lashed down at the buildings beneath them. It seemed certain that one of them would win, but Morgana faltered when she heard her father's anguished voice. Kill him late in the rubble, mortally wounded. Howling with grief, Morgana hurled her half of her mother's sword at Kale and plunged to the surface like a meteorite. Right, so she gave her her half of the sword. She cradled her father, cursing their inheritance for the destruction around them. Kale landed dumbstruck and Morgana demanded to know if this smiting of wicked mortals included Killim, whose crime was stealing them away from their mother. Kale gave no answer but soared into the heavens without looking back. Morgana's wings became an inescapable, inescapable reminder of her pain. She tried to cut them down from her flesh but could find no blade strong enough. Instead, she bound them with iron chains, resolving instead to walk the world of mortals. Right. Over the centuries, her tale fell into myth and the name Morgana was all but forgotten. To this day, the people of Damasi venerate the winged protector but recall only the glory and truth of one sister, while Morgana's dark outbursts and belief in personal redemption became the mysteries of the Veiled One. Through all of this, she still refuses to abandon those who would seek her aid. Bitter, betray bitter betrayed, she bides her time in the kingdom's shadows, knowing with certainty that Kale's light will someday return to ruin terror, and all will face her judgement. As magic begins to rise again, Morgana sees that dawn is nearly upon them. Right, that is interesting. Right, so it's really good to get the full picture now, to get Morgana's side of the actual events that, take that took place. 
few things that are interesting in that. The first one, it says that when they were fighting the sky and she realized that they killed their father, she threw her side of the blade at Morgana, uh, at, sorry, Kale. So that explains when you look at Kale and Morgana, Kale has the sword, Morgana doesn't. And it also ties in nicely where it says there that her wings were her a reminder of what happened and how she actually killed inadvertently her father. So she chains them now and she walks. Because it said in the previous video, didn't it? Uh, Kale said, uh, if we have wings, why don't you fly? And then Morgana said, we have we have feet, so we should walk. So that's obviously tying back to the events that happened here as well. And then right at the end, it says, doesn't it, that even though Kale hasn't been around Rude Terror for a while, Morgana expects her to come back one day. And it says there, as magic begins to rise again, Morgana sees that dawn is nearly upon them. So I wonder if she's waiting. So maybe when Kale comes back, Morgana will reappear as well to kind of like provide that balance. So uh, yeah, that was really good. What I am going to be doing now is I am going to be moving on to the login theme. Then I'm going to move on to the actual stories. So let's go. Such a cool image though, isn't it? Such a cool image. Oh, it's not. Right, so I wonder if this is going to change. Thought so. Yeah. Okay.
yeah that was good that was really good so i'm going to pause it here to first talk about the actual imagery you can see in the bottom left hand corner as well in fact forget the bottom left hand corner the bottom half is kind of the actual the darkness and the negative thoughts that morgana has she's at the bottom there the bottom left maybe it's her when her father has passed you can see her there with her head in her hands and then the death of people on the right hand side well, above the top half, you can see kale, you can see the actual stars, you can see the aspects flying there as well. So you definitely get the, the different, the different, and um, what they both represent, basically, the light and the dark. But when I was listening to this, the first minute, minute and a half, I'm thinking, this is a bit, little bit too upbeat. This is a little bit too upbeat. I wonder if they're going to have the first half for kale and the second half for Morgana and the do. So, for example... <laughs> Quite, it's quite upbeat, that kind of vibe to it. And then if you just go forward to, let's say here, let's pull it to here. You can definitely tell which half is for which which champion, basically. So that was good. That was a good one. Um, what I'm going to do now is, now I said I was going to go into the special interactions next, but I think I might do, hmm, I'm going to go through both stories now. Then I'm going to go through the second login theme. Then I'm going to go through the special interactions. Um, in fact, no, 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 slow down. Let me go through the skins first. I almost forgot. I'll go through both skins first. Then I'll go through the story. Then I'll go through the login theme. And then we'll go through the special interactions. Let's go. Right. So, Kale, the Righteous. You could call her the righteous one. Mm, it's debatable. So, um, yeah, she has got a few more skins than Kindred. I reviewed Kindred a few weeks back, and poor Kindred had three. It looks like Kale's got at least ten. Oh, well. That's not a bad thing when you're reviewing Kale. So, uh, yeah, first of all, let me just appreciate the actual base skin. The base skin looks really good. Looks so good. So, uh, let's... Ah, in fact, I didn't even see that as well. You can see there underneath, you've got um, Morgana. She's got a hands out like she's holding up. It's like a weight. She's got the, the weight of, obviously, what happened to her father, I presume, on her shoulder. Maybe that's kind of illustrating that there as well. Anyways, Silver Kale. Okay, nice. I'm loving the actual candles as well. Ooh. Okay. Okay, that's nice. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of these and then I'm going to pick out my favourite one. So, okay, that's pretty cool. So, Viridian. Viridian Kale. Here we go. Okay. Okay, looking at some out of World of Warcraft. Nice. Okay, Viridian. Transcended Kale. Okay, that's cool as well. Yeah. It's, that's really giving me like him um, Shereman. Really giving me Shereman vibes. Uh, nice. Battleborn. Yeah, so this is... So I wonder if this is Kale and this is Morgana. Battleborn. Yeah, that's really good. Probably my favourite one so far. Judgment. <laughs> okay, like like Lady Justice. Okay, Judgment Kale. Okay, cool. Etherwing Kale. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. I like her look there as well. Okay, Riot Kale. <laughs> That's a little bit different. Riot Kale. Okay, Iron Inquisitor. Interesting. Interesting. Pentacle. Oh, come on. How good is that? That reminds me as well now. Pentacle Mortal Reminder. She is the one that right at the end lands, doesn't she? She lands with a sword right at the end. So that's Kale. Right. And the final one, I've got a sneaky feeling to work. Psyops. New work. Psyops Kale um, hasn't been updated on the website. So give me a moment. Right. So here we are. This is Psyops Kale. Uh, yeah. Wicked. That is. Yeah. I love how, you know, she's got swords. That's all she needs. That's all she ever needs. But she's got a handgun there. Just in case. Just in case. So obviously supplement the look. Um, yeah, that's really good. So, if I had to go back to the top and off the top of the dome, I had to pick 
my favorite skin out of all of these. In fact, how much you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, ten skins. Good guess. So, um, my favorite one would have to be. I do like Battleborn, I really do. Though it would have to be. Uh, I like Battleborn, I like Riot, I like Psyops. I mean, how good does Psyops look? But. It's got to be Pentacle. That has got to be the best one. Um, yeah, she just looks so good there. And also, it's for me, the biggest contrast between her original kind of character. The original character is light, it's justice, it's good. And the kind of like the, the rock heavy metal vibe is kind of the opposite of that. That's something that Morgana would rock. So I like that it's opposite. Um, and that for me would be my favorite skin. Plus, I like how you've got the, the actual sword there, and then you've got the handle, and then you've got the mic at the top of the handle. I mean, come on, it didn't get better than that. So, that is my favorite skin, Pentakill for Kale. Let's move on to Morgana. So, here we are Morgana the Fallen. So, this is her base skin as well. Nope, let's go back. How many does she have? Let's see, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She has ten as well. Well, they are twin sisters. What did you expect? Once again, her base skin looks really good. And if I was picking my favorite base skin between the two, it would be hers. I really do like hers as well. It kind of gives me um, almost like Raven from Teen Titans, that kind of vibe, if you know what I mean. So, Exiled Morgan. Oh, Exiled Morgana, not Morgan. Maybe Morgan for short. Okay. Cool, so this is Morgana and this is um, Kale. Cool, okay. Sinful Succulence. Ah, okay, I like that one. Sinful Succulence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. That is really good. So now she's a baker. So her and Pantheon are just chilling. They're both bakers. And you've got the gingerbread man who is running away uh, for good reason as well. Blade Mistress Morgana. Cool. Yes, 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 yes. I do like that one. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Kaisa. She looks a bit like Kaisa there as well. I like that one. Blackthorn Morgana. That's cool as well. I do like that one. Ghost Bride. Wow. It's wicked. Yeah, that's nice. Victorious Morgana. Really good. Probably my favorite one so far. Uh, Luna Wraith. Cool. Okay. Bewitching. Yeah. You've got to obviously have a witch costume in there. Come on. Um, Majestic Empress Morgana. Wonder who that is there. Hmm. And, wow. Coven Morgana. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's got to be the best one, hasn't it? So, if I was to go back to the beginning and pick one, even though all these are really good, um, the Blade Mistress is nice. That Blade Mi Mistress is nice. The Sinful Succulence is too funny. That is too good as well. And the rest of them are really nice. Bewitching is excellent as well. But if I had to pick one, it's obvious. It's quite easy. This is, for me, by far the best looking one. Wow. So yeah, that would be my pick, Coven Morgana for her skins. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through both of their stories, uh, and then I'm gonna go through their special interactions. And then I think I'm gonna finish off with their spotlight. After the spotlight, I don't think there's anything else that I've missed. Let's go. Right, so in the fires of justice. So this is the one for Kale. Abra's stomach tightened in knots as he wailed on the steps of a shining temple. Standing watch before the temple's doors was a statue of the protector. The setting sun silhouetted its face, casting a radiant aura around its brown head or bold, so to say, head. It was carved in white stone that sparkled with flecks of gold. Great ring wings framed its shoulders as it held two swords against its chest. 
The statue's helmeted expression was blank, astute, more perfect than any human. Hundreds of candles covered the plinth at its feet. Abris leaned forward, leaned his sword and shield against the base of the sculpture. They were as pristine and unmarred as the stone, stone swords above him. He was told that this protector blessed virtuous soldiers of Demacia and felt a strange comfort at its presence. An elderly woman cloaked in white exited the door of the temple. Please do have a moment, Abris called out to her. She made her way slowly over to him. The illuminators always stop for those in need. Tell me, what do you seek here? Her face crinkled as she spoke, but her eyes were kind. I I leave for battle tomorrow, said Abris. He opened and closed his fist, nervous. My sword arm is strong, and I am proud to defend Demas's honour. But I wonder, how can I claim to be any better than the barbarians evading our lands if I slaughter them just the same? So in terms of barbarians, I presume he's talking about Noxons. Noxons? Yeah, he's not he's Noxons, isn't it? People from people from Noxus. And it's a good question as well. Good question. What good are our white walls and replendent banners if below them we spill their blood as they would ours? Ah, the Illuminator said. Yes, killing is not to be taken lightly, even as a soldier. Let me tell you a story. She gazed up at the statue. Will you light a candle for her as I speak? So I wonder if this is dedicated to maybe Kale or maybe Kale's mother. Hmm. Maybe someone else. Abris knelt and took a flame from one of the... Votive, uh, votive candles at the statue's feet, using it to light another. The illuminated voice cracked with age as she began the story, and Abris was reminded of her, gr of his great grandmother, or his late grandmother, sorry, who, who'd often told him myths and histories of their people. He never knew which stories were true and which which she had conjured from her fanciful mind. Long ago, in a land now lost to time and crumbling decay, a cruel king led his people into poverty. During a time of great famine, the king gathered everyone from across the realm into his castle courtyard. There, he declared he would cast aside the old laws in order to end their time of scarcity, as was his right. He told their gilded law book and cast it to the floor, naming himself the law, like Henry VIII. Whatever rules or decrees he spoke would become law, no matter what. Under guise of protecting the people, he announced his first decree. Since there were too many mouths to feed, the king said the elderly had no right to food. Well, they were to be killed, and there was no other way. The starving citizens had no strength left to fight this injustice, and the king's guard forced the elderly folk to line up for the slaughter. The first in the line was a man with silver hair who stumbled as he stepped forward. He pleaded with the king, I am a baker, let me make bread for you. For you and the people, he cried, spare my life. But the king responded, can you can you be young again? Can you need muscle back into your broken and sorry limbs? No? Well then, there is no redemption for you. And he meant, motioned to his exist, executioner, sorry, who raised his blade, and the baker's head rolled to the floor. Well, how deplorable, said Abras, interrupting the illuminator. <laughs> Did no one resist the king's new laws? The illuminator smiled. Thankfully, there was one who stood against the grave injustice. Our immortal protector had not been seen in this land for centuries, but perhaps extreme injustice sends ripples that echo far beyond the realms unknown. Far beyond the realms unknown. In any case, at this mo movement, she at this moment she appeared. The heavens opened with blinding light, as if stars themselves had focused all their beams in one place. The protector emerged from choice, from choice. Kale, wondrous and terrified in her majesty, she confronted the cruel king who stood still as stone at her sight. No king stands above the statues of the law, she declared. Speak thy name and prepare for judgment. I am not merely done or nearly above the law, winged beast. I am the law. <laughs> With a nod, he motioned for his guards to advance. They did so in unison, raising their spears to the sky as one. Because of my... Because of me, my people have purpose. My people know their place, and my people thank me for it. The Lord's justice given for form. It is true and fair judgment within ink. It cannot be undone, said the protector. She drew her swords, 
which blazed with holy fire. So she's got swords now. She had one sword, but remember in the story, in the bio for Morgana, she threw her sword at Kale. So Kale has both swords now. But most fearful of all was the burning in her eyes, gleaming in grave with uncompromising wrath. He felt like he was staring at the sun, beautiful and terrible in her glory. And the king wept in fear. He appealed to the protector's mercy and fell to his knees, pleading at her feet. Wrong person to plead to. I can change, the king begged. I see now the error of my ways. I was selfish and corrupt and did not deserve my crown. Let me live and I shall follow the rule of law. The protector watched him with a steady, steady gaze. When he had finished speaking, she drew breath. It is said that her voice in, that, in this moment echoed as if the very gods were speaking through her. Can you undo your deeds of injustice, king? Asked the protector. Can you speak your lies and unmake your false laws against fair and righteous judgment? No, then there will be no redemption for you. So basically, <laughs> yeah, the tables have turned. Karma, innit? Basically, it's karma. What he said to the baker was said to him, and I presume he's going to die. In one quick motion, the protector thrust her burning blade through the king's heart, and he cried out as she impaled him on the gilded law book he had cast to the floor. The law book burst into flames, which burned with the terrible heart heat of the heavens. This was a holy fire, one that would scorch the evil sinners from the land and cleanse the just, leaving them unscathed. The cruel king screamed as the protectors fire burned his guards and councilmen, his executioner and his servants. The fire did not stop as it spread throughout the land, fueled by the lies of the false king and his wicked followers. The survivors forever remembered the days of glory, for in the ashes of their society they were given a chance to rebuild injustice and honour. And if the land ever returned to unlawful chaos, they were certain the protector would descend from the heavens once more. The Illuminator smiled down at Abris. We must all act with virtue and honour, she said. For kings to bakers, servants to soldiers, but no one is above the law and no one is above justice. The raiders who evade, attack and invade our southern borders are lawless and malevolent. With every breath as they march forward, they threaten the safety of our land. Your role as a shield for Damasi is a great honour and a just endeavour, and the protector looks kindly upon those with justice in their hearts. I said Abrus. He looked to his sword, unblemished by acts of war. He vowed that from his first strike to his last, each would be in the name of justice. If you ever feel uncertain, soldier, think on how the protector would act. If you act with integrity and truth, as the protector would, surely she will guide your blade, even if you must wet it with blood. The Illuminator bowed and returned to her temple. Abris watched as the candle he had lit, flick, lit flickered in, in the dark. He stood up to walk back to his camp from, for the night. As he turned to look towards the statue one last time, he thought he saw the shrine of another flame deep within the stone helm of the Protector. Right. Okay, nice. So that was good. That was good. And uh, a, a nice little story that it doesn't even necessarily involve Kale, but talks obviously about her justices. And I like the comparison there as well, basically saying that if you get your hands dirty for the right cause, if it's for a purpose, if it's for just purpose, then it's acceptable, or at least in their eyes of justice, it's, it's acceptable. And that old woman give that soldier a classic example of Kale doing that as well. So, uh, yeah, that was good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to also now read the story for Morgana. Right, so this is Prayer to the Crumbling Shrine. So, Rin stubbed his toe on a root and stumbled, catching himself before he lost his balance. A few paces in front of him, his great aunt looked back. Need my old bones to slow you down, or slow down for you? Go oh, ha, she chuckled. No, he murmured in his, to his shoes. You know it's bad when you're talking to your shoes, because you know you got shamed up. His great aunt, Pira, was snow-haired and stooped with age though she was still a few inches taller than Rin. He wished he could be as tall as his honourable brother. He would have towered over both of them if he was there. Rin had never been in this part of the woods before. The pine trees grew closer together, so much that the light of the new, uh, noonday sun had diminished to a glimmer amongst the shadows. Aunt Pyrrha stopped ahead. At first he thought she stood in front of a mossy boulder, but as he caught up with her, the remains of a stone figure, eroded by time, Rin fiddled with the rocks in his pocket. Ah, do you know who this is? Aunt 
Ast and Pyrrha. So this is going, I'm presuming going to be Morgana. Mm. Some old noble from the city, said Rin. Oh no, said Aunt Pyrrha cheerfully. To many she was more than the shadow and myth. A figure known as the Veiled One. Also, Aunt Pyrrha lifted her lantern up towards the figure. The statue's left arm was missing from the shoulder, but her right palm was open as if inviting them forward. Upon her head was what must have once been a delicate stone shroud, now coated in vines. Feathered stubs rose from her shoulders, broken and weathered. Rin had seen that part of her face had crumbled garishly and he sh shivered. The unbroken half of her face was not much better. The remaining eye was marked with stains and her expression was spiteful, as if she was about to spit out sour milk. Don't like her, Aunt Pyrrha said, amused. You are not the only one. She is not the most beloved, but she knows all about revenge. Rin's eyes widened. He thought he'd been so careful. Yes, yes, I heard the rocks clanking around your pocket, said Aunt Pyrrha. I know you're planning to get back at your brother. He didn't mean to hurt you, you know. He hit me in the eye with the blunt of his axe, Rin cried. What do you think he meant to do? Shouldn't he be the one who gets a lesson? He was showing you where to chop wood. You know he would never hurt you on purpose, said Aunt Pyrrha. He deserves his own black eye. <laughs> and if you gave him one, what lesson do you think he would learn from that? Rin did not think Aunt Pyrrha would, would much like his response, so he stayed silent. No answer? A story then, said Aunt Pyrrha. Now listen, so here we go. Now we get another story. Rin sat himself down in front of the statue. What a sigh. So, what, what a sigh. He leaned, well, with a sigh, with a sigh, he leaned his head against his hand. Long ago, in the deepest, darkest woods, where the trees grow together so tightly no sign of the sky or stars was visible, the veiled one lived, far away from any settlement. Though few, though few spoke with her, it was believed that she was older than dawn, sharper and wiser than any in the land. Those with disputes they could not solve themselves would come to her for final judgment to seek wisdom, absolution and occasionally punishment, but they did so with caution, for it was also known that her lessons could be severe. One day a cleric and his pupil entered the woods to find the veiled one, for the pupil he, he erred, ed. The pupil had acted in anger against his elder, striking him with a censer. Smoldering incense had scarred the cloak's face with a grotesque burn. The pupil knew he'd done wrong and wanted to repent. The two had journeyed a day and a night before they found the veiled one. They entered a cavern illuminated by candles. Water dripped from the ceiling and strange po portions lined the wall. walls. It stank of grave soil and moss. Dozens of raven black feathers littered the floor. A figure silently, em silently emerged from the shadows to meet them. The veiled one. A black shroud hid most of her features from sight, but her eerily violet eyes shone through. Her feet were bare and on the cold stone floor. As the pupil told his tale, she gazed at him with an unbroken, unbroken stare. I see that your choices were no accident, spoken, spoke the veiled one at last. The voice, though rarely heard, was barbed like a thorn bush. You acted with purpose and certainty, and yet now you feel much pain at having hurt your master. I, I wish to atone for my sins so that I may rid myself of this guilt, he said. Guilt can teach many things to a heart humbled by intent. Why did you strike your master, she asked. It was an act of anger. I was wrong, said the pupil. Perhaps. What caused your anger, asked the veiled one. The pupil looked at his cleric and cast his eyes down. In my foolishness, I sought to end his lesson to another student, said the pupil. And what was that lesson? Before the pupil could answer, the cleric interrupted. Right, so there's always a story behind the story, and she's kind of obviously getting to that, isn't she? My students require instruction in mirrored, in mirrored, mirrored ways, he said. I teach them manners, patience, and restraint. If I must, I will use a lash. I do not enjoy it. These lessons are my scared, sacred duty. The veiled one peered at the cleric. Behind the shroud, her eyes seemed to bore into him. But you do enjoy them, she said. I beg. <laughs> Tell me, sacred master, are your lessons truly for the good of your students, or do you punish them to relish their suffering? Said the veiled one. <laughs> so he's brought the student to be punished, but it looks like the cleric <laughs> is going to be punished. Hmm. No, the pupil interrupted. He can't have. He cares about us. The cleric raised his hand and struck the boy. 
I don't need your lying breath to defend me, spoke the cleric, his scarred face vivid with anger. The veiled one opened her palm and chained the cleric to her with dark fire. The bindings glimmered with immaterial violet light, but the cleric could not break them as he struggled. You came to me for another's punishment, she hissed, but ignore your own sins. Your sick pride swells as they come back to you, cleric. Since you refuse to look yourself, I will make you feel the pain you caused. Hmm. Through the chains that bound them, the veiled one forced him to endure all the shame, suffering and loneliness he had inflicted on his pupils. For an instant, the cleric's heart stopped as a great weight he had never known constricted his very soul. He fell to his knees, fixed in place by bitter torment. A shadowed, fl shadowed flames lit his flesh. Stop, please stop, the student cried. Please punish me in his place. He has suffered enough. You defend him even now, said the veiled one. The wretch has much to learn ere death's mercy lay claims. He alone must feel the pain he caused so he may never hurt another. You came here seeking understanding. Its burden is now yours to bear. The pupil did not show his face at his closer for many days, but when hunger and fatigue overcame him, he finally forgot his fear as of his master's lash. Upon his return, he found the cleric a different man, as I presumed you would be. <laughs> Where his elder had been cruel and uncaring, he was patient and gentle. But though the burning of his face had not yet healed, the veiled one's lesson had cut even deeper. Aunt Perry set her lantern at the base of the statue. Half her stone grey face was lost to darkness, with flickering shadow running down her shroud like tears. Be careful, Rin. When wishing for punishment, can you teach a lesson that will make your brother a better person? Even if he did hit you on purpose, there is no sense in you your punishing him senselessly, not selfishly. Rin felt the rocks in his pocket. I guess my brother did say he was sorry. After I fell down from getting hit in the eye, he said. He begrudgingly dropped the rocks to the, fir to the forest floor. Wonderful. Let us give thanks to the veiled one. Aunt Perry opened her lantern and blew the candle out. Remember, revenge is an act of pride, but teaching is selfless, she said. In case you forget, I'll be watching you. Ah, and the veiled one might be too. Rin watched the smoke curl and unfold around the statue's empty stone eye. Shrouded in the figured shadow. When he looked back, Aunt Perra had set off through the trees back towards the village. Rin hurried to catch up. <laughs> okay, so that was good. So that one and the one for Kale, very similar in terms of it doesn't involve all of the actual characters. It's someone's story telling to someone else an actual old fable regarding them. So one regarding Kale and one regarding Morgana. And then you can kind of see right at the end as well that he just realised it's probably best if I don't seek revenge and I take the actual advice of my auntie as well. So, uh, yeah, what I'm going to do now is now I've gone through both of the stories. I am now going to go through the second login theme. Then I'm going to go through the special interruptions. Let's go. ready for another drop a nice quick um actual login screen there one minute 20 seconds so this is the ether wing kale so i'm not quite sure 
she, this obviously must have been one of the skins I reviewed one of her 10 skins but I can't quite remember it um, but yeah I presume this is obviously one of her skins and this is the accompanying looking screen as well which was pretty decent pretty decent so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be moving on to her special interactions so let's go are yordles small children or large squirrels <laughs> good question who knows Sister, here to break my heart anew? Better a broken heart than a shackled soul. Hmm. Still playing with your little human pets, sister? Oh. At okay. least I haven't smited all my friends. Yep. Your sword is with me. Do you want it back? <laughs> I need no blade. Makes more sense now. Why have we wings, sister, if not to fly? This one as well. Why do we have feet, if not to tread upon the soil? Yep. Ugh, you again. Are you following me or something? Mother must be so proud of all your murders, Kale. Not murder. Justice. What have you done with Mother's sword? What had to be done? Flame purifies. Oh, am I pure now, sister? I am your salvation! Oh, spare me. <laughs> Redemption in the light! Preach later. Sister! Kill! Shielded from yourself. I'll ignore that. Shielded from yourself. How gracious of you. You're welcome. I didn't say thank you. <laughs> you never do. <laughs> it takes a cold heart to abandon your family. My cold heart is the reason we are alive. You hide behind your laws in arrogance, Kale. My laws have more merit than your whims ever will. Remember strolling together in the woods when we were girls? <laughs> You never had any fear. Funny. I remember it differently. Today, it seems we must put our animosity aside. We've never been enemies, sister. How beautiful your mind must be to think such things. How tragic yours to believe them. Wow. Oh, that's the line. That's, that's the line of the interaction so far. Do not turn your back on me, sister. Yeah. I never did. Do not run from your shadow, Kale. I am the light. Feel something, anything. Why do you think I wear armor, sister? Own your frailty. I am not frail. Suffer as I have. Think you're the only one? I make my own justice. And you damn yourself. Attacking me with my own blade, sister. No mercy. I'm gonna pause here. Do you know what this reminds me of? Because I've been reviewing them in the past couple of weeks as well. It really reminds me of Shen and Zed. How Shen is really like he's all he's Mr. Goody Two Shoes, isn't he? And he has to do everything by the book. That's Kale. And Zed is like Morgana who is a little bit different, but she, she understands people a little bit better as well. And like for me, if I'm a camp, I'm, 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 I'm in the camp of Morgana. I'm team Morgana over Kale. But yeah, for me, the similarities are quite clear. I think Kale is like Shen and Morgana is like Zed. In their dynamics, their philosophy on life, actions, decisions, what they class as righteous and unrighteous as well. Anyways. What's new? No mercy. Not even for your twin? Kale, still the same hair after, what, a few hundred years? <laughs> okay. Still copying my hairstyle, sister? <laughs> Magic tricks, adorable. Sister, have you come to defy me again? Your power could save this world, Morgana. Instead, it dooms you. Justice! How boring! True justice needs compassion! 
Justice Preach. is never blind. Yep. yep. Judge yourself, sister. Sister, you broke our family and my heart. Kale, have you forgotten our father? You mask your feelings, Kale, because you have none. Hmm. Here to make excuses for their darkness, sister? My sister is here. To fall before me again, no doubt. I shall battle my maudlin twin once more. Morgana is here. How I relish the opportunity to battle my dark shadow. Hmm. Kale, blinded by the shadows your light casts. Well, I will not disappear as much as Kale would like me to. You demean yourself to fight amongst mortals, Kale. I am unmade in the image of my twin. Kale, I know her soul. She broke my heart. I shall battle my heartless twin once more. You Demacians have lost your way. You seem worthy, Garen. Now prove it. Hmm. Now prove it. A throne won't save you from my judgment, Highness. Lux, the complicit are the worst sinners. Funny, you're on my list too. <laughs> you may have been innocent once, Silas. No longer. Are you a talking animal? <laughs> Tiny mortal? Why are you so soft? <laughs> If you were innocent, I would not be here. There is no hiding from the light. I am the consequence of your actions. An eye for an eye. Wait, okay. Slain by your own sword. Hmm, true. This world did not deserve you. Buried with your transgressions. Thus the mighty fall. Your guilt was clear. Here we go. Pentakill. I am exalted! They cannot kill justice. The light renews. Cool. That's nice. With the just hand of law, I enter the fray. Unbound by this mortal pettiness. In me will rise the strength of a thousand swords, the fury of a thousand flames. When I looked into my mother's eyes, I saw a paradise for the just and glorious. It is for that world I fight. These endless mortal cycles, Cruelty begets suffering. Suffering begets cruelty. It ends with me. Grant me the strength to forge by flame a world beyond worlds. Demacian lies are pretty. Demacian faith is a hollow shield. Those who wear armor fear death, Garen. And that's a lot of armor. <laughs> Those you love can destroy you, Jarvan. LeBlanc, wish my twin would disappear as fast as yours. There is darkness in everyone, Lux. Even you. Your secrets are why you suffer, Lux. A metal heart still breaks. Your soul sings for a fallen world, Sona. I saw you in your cell, Silas. Heard your cries. Felt your anguish. Did someone send you here as a joke, Yordle? Did Kale send you? <laughs> Darkness reveals our truth, Zed. Let me show you what it is to fall. I am your darkness. I am your truth. Justice, how boring. Blind faith.
faith is for fools. A sword! Cute! <laughs> Justice! How boring! Time to come down to Earth. Send my regards to Mother. <laughs> blood for my blood. Take pride in how swiftly we fall. Mortality is truly divine. Pain must be felt. Two, three, four. Pentacure. They wanted a villain. I gave them a villain. Vision does not require light. Darkness is everywhere. The world is a beautiful place. Do not let it be hidden. We shall see through their lies. These mortal cycles begin anew. Oh. Back into the fray. That's the that's a nice intro. I have endured worse. With each step, I forge my fate in the fires of pain. Wings bound and feet earthly tethered, I move against the false promises of order and justice. The trials I endured were seared into my soul. They drive me forward, even after my wounds have healed. They are not ready for the reflections within my darkness. Humans are inherently flawed, and yet I trust them more than the divine. True grace is beautiful in its imperfection, honest in its emotion, freed by its own frailty. They shall feel my <clears throat> pain and fear for their souls. Okay, so that was really good. Really good to see the interactions between Kale and Morgana and then their own individual interactions with other characters and other scenarios as well. But for me, if you're talking about talking about justice, Morgana for me is the one that actually has the better handle on justice because it needs a level of compassion and a level of empathy, which she clearly has that I don't think Kale has. The interaction that Kale had with um, Silas, and if you compare that with the interaction that Morgana had with Silas, completely different reaction altogether. Um, so yeah, for me, I'm all team Morgana, definitely over Kale. But let me pick out my favorite interaction. Right, okay, so this next interaction is my favorite one out of the whole thing. Today, it seems we must put our animosity aside. We've never been enemies, sister. How beautiful your mind must be to think such things. How tragic yours to believe them. Wow, <laughs> that's so deep, isn't it? That is so deep. And that kind of sums up their stance, doesn't it? How Kale views Morgana and how Morgana views Kale. Uh, yeah, perfectly sums it up, and that for that for that very reason, that's why that's my favourite interaction. Um, that one, and obviously the first one, the first one as well. Are yordles small children or large squirrels? <laughs> you gotta love anything to do with Timu as well. But yeah, them two are my favourite interactions uh, from this video. So, what have I got left to do now? I have got. Let me think. I still need to do the spotlight. So let me end on the actual spotlight for, I think it's Kale. Let's go. From the aspect of justice, Kale has taken up her mother's sword and vowed to purge the land of evil in an unrelenting crusade. She increases in- Yeah, so she's taken up her mother's sword. So I wonder what happened to her mother. I didn't actually find out in the stories what happened to her. So I'm presuming she's died, presuming power over the course of a game, sending wave after wave of fiery celestial fury oh, really? to serve the unjust their final judgment. You did. The righteous shall prevail. Welcome to the Kale Champion Spotlight. Let's go. Kale's passive is Divine Ascent. Over the course of the game, Kale rises closer to her celestial form, increasing the speed, range, and power of her basic attacks. Oh. As evil okay. grows, so shall I. Cool. At level one, Kale is fueled by Righteous Fury, and her basic attacks increase her attack speed. At max stacks, Kale becomes exalted and gains movement speed toward enemies. 
At level 6, Kale flies on two sets of wings, and when exalted, her attacks launch flaming waves that deal bonus damage. At level 11, Kale's helmet comes off and another pair of wings appear, signaling that she now attacks whoa, from range. Whoa. At level 16, Kale transforms into a true champion of justice, wielding two swords, mm. becoming permanently exalted, and dealing true damage with her waves of fire. Kale's E, Starfire Spellblade, has a passive and active effect. Passively, her basic attacks deal bonus magic damage. When activated, Kale's next basic attack becomes ranged and deals a portion of the target's missing health as bonus damage. After ascending to level 6, this attack damages enemies next to the target as well. Kale's Radiant Blast pierces the first enemy hit with light, dealing damage, shredding resistances, slowing. and slowing any foe caught in the blast. Celestial Blessing heals Seems Kale and a target allied champion, infusing them both with a burst Aye. of speed. It's a short duration buff, so it's better at quickly maneuvering and dodging enemy attacks rather than long-term chases. Kale decides who lives and dies. Her divine judgment makes a target ally completely invulnerable for a couple seconds, then purifies the area around them with a cascade of shining blades. Kale can move while casting, but can't attack or cast other spells until the swords fall. This means it's often better to ult an ally who can dive the enemy team instead of using it on yourself. You'll save them from certain death and massively damage foes at the same time. Yeah. In order for Kale to truly meet out justice, she must ascend to her final form as quickly as possible. However, her weak early game can yeah, be held, so you'll she's need squishy. to play safe to avoid becoming superfood. Rely on Radiant Blast and Starfire Spellblade to farm from range. If you stray too close, or try to wing it in a fight, you'll be butchered where you stand. Calling on allies for aid can spare you the worst of your rough early game. Use Divine Judgment for a clutch intervention, then turn the fight in your favor and get the kill. Go, go, go. The Righteous wow. really shines okay. once she reaches level 11 and starts to outscale enemies. Tower dives are no trouble thanks to Divine Judgment, and your rapid fire attacks will melt enemies easily. Exaltations all around. Once Kale's Apotheosis is complete, take your crusade across the map for the final victory. Lead your own team into the fray, protecting critical allies while condemning your enemies yep. to a swift Sister. execution. You'll win the team fight just as you planned. <laughs> if you want a glorious paladin who eventually becomes a godlike agent of punishment, Rise with Kale and serve them justice. Okay, For more info Go. on the Righteous and her fallen sister, sword at the links below. And remember, kids, Kale is good Those for skins. you. <laughs> Spinach is better. <laughs> it's a terrible joke. But Kale is good for you. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. That's just that. Okay, that's the skin. That one there is the skin with the second login theme, I think. Right, okay, so that was good. That was good to watch that. Um, she seems OP. Almost as OP as Akali. Now, I know since I watched the actual spotlight on Akali, I had quite a few people telling me that she's been nerfed numerous times to make it kind of like fair now. But she looks almost as strong as Akali. Wow. You can clearly see that she scales for late game. She seems quite squishy at the beginning, but once you get through the first few stages to level six, then she seems to be, uh, yeah, 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 big things, big things. So, I think, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it here today, guys, on this one in terms of Morgana and Kale. I don't think we have a spotlight for Morgana. Let me know if there is one. But I searched and I couldn't find one, so I don't think we've got one for Morgana. So in terms of Morgana and Kale, I think I've covered everything now. I, th I think I've covered, I've covered the login theme, I've covered the interactions, the spotlight, the story, and the bios. Um, and I'll just end with this by saying, out of the two, I actually like uh, Morgana better in terms of her story arc. I can actually empathize with her more. She appeals to me more as a character as well. Um, and I would like it to the equivalent of Kale is like Shen, Morgana is like Zed, if that kind of makes sense. So yeah, hopefully you guys actually enjoyed my thoughts and reactions as well, and also the breakdown and my favorite skins. And if you did, feel free to let me know. Feel free to like, comment, or maybe also subscribe for more content like this. I will now be going through every single champion in Demacia. 
Once they've done that, I will then probably go through to Noxus and then cover the champions in Noxus afterwards. But that will be for a while because I've got at least another, how many? Maybe 10, 15 champions to cover in Demacia. So it's a bit of a task. But uh, yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan for what I, I actually want to do. Um, I'm not quite sure who I'm going to cover yet in terms of Demacia. It might be Lux, it might be Garen, I don't know. It might be someone else. We shall see. So anyways, I'm well aware now that this video is probably, once I've edited it, it's going to be well over an hour long. So I'm going to cut now. I'm going to cut now, okay? If you guys have made it all the way to the end, well done, achievement unlocked. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.